Analytic Epidemiology, Overview of Study Design, Part 3. In this lecture, we will discuss both cohort and case control studies. We'll be giving an overview. First, we will talk about the design of a cohort study. This slide depicts the general design and nature of a cohort study. Um, it may appear similar to that in an experimental study um, in that a population <clears throat> is identified and um, we uh, look at people without disease, we exclude uh, people from that population who may have disease, um, and then we um, do not, however, randomly allocate people into an exposure or not exposure, but we simply um, determine at the start of the study uh, whether or not people are exposed or not exposed to a particular factor of interest. Uh, <clears throat> we can in fact look at more than one exposure, although typically one is, is we focus on one. And then over time <clears throat> we follow the group and then uh, determine whether or not those who were exposed to a particular factor develop disease uh, versus those who were not exposed. We can come up with a um, incidence of disease in both groups and then a uh, relative risk to compare the two groups. Here is an example of a um, cohort study on the effects of oral contraceptives. <clears throat> um, there was in 1976 a large study that was undertaken known as the Nurses Health Survey and uh, this Poet was composed of 120,000 married female nurses aged 30 to 55. Every two years, they were administered a questionnaire um, who talked about, um, in, they provide information on their health behaviors and uh, reproductive and medical histories. Uh, the initial cohort was enrolled with the objective of evaluating health effects of oral contraceptive use. So that was the particular um, exposure of interest, those nurses who used and those who did not use contraceptives. Again, it was the choice of the different groups as to whether they were using them or not. They were not assigned um, that particular intervention. So in addition to studying the relationship between oral contraceptive use and the risk of ovarian and breast cancers, they were also able to look at other diseases in this cohort, such as whether or not heart disease and stroke were also um, influenced by oral contraceptive use and also they were able to look at whether smoking increased the risk of stroke. Now cohort studies have a number of strengths. Um, they are good for rare exposures in that you can identify populations in which the exposures are taking place. For example, there are occupational cohorts that are sometimes followed uh, where people have an exposure to a certain uh, factor within their uh, work setting, um, which is not typically seen in the general population. There is usually a determination, uh, well, the exposure <clears throat> usually precedes the disease, and in most prospective uh, cohort studies in which uh, one starts and then follows people over time, uh, the uh, determination of who is exposed and not exposed is done at the start of the study so that that can be uh, done uh, pretty accurately. Um, you can also look at multiple effects or outcomes of a given exposure. Uh, it's another advantage of cohort studies. And um, as was mentioned briefly earlier, uh, you can actually determine the incidence of a disease in the population because you're following a population over time and looking, you're able to identify new cases of a particular disease or outcome. Ah, dis disadvantages though of cohort studies is that they can be expensive. It takes, you know, often a lot of people are enrolled in the cohort studies and they may last over a very long time period. It's not particularly efficient for rare diseases. Um, the case control design, which we'll talk about shortly, is more efficient for that. And once we begin the study, it may be difficult to examine other study factors or exposures. Uh, as was mentioned, the prospective study may take a long time if the disease is 
of interest have a long latency period. Um, one can design retrospective cohort studies in which we look back in time at a group and determine people who were and were not exposed uh, to certain factors and then see where they end up um, in terms of disease. Uh, these have the advantage of being um, easier, less costly, and taking less time, but the problem is determining accurately exposure history in the past. Finally, um, as people are in the cohorts and they're, the cohorts are proceeding, the studies proceeding over time, we may actually lose people from the cohorts, either from the exposed or the unexposed groups. Uh, which may affect the validity of the study, particularly if there is some uh, bias in terms of uh, particular people uh, leaving the studies um, and that that may actually influence the number of people who develop disease in the end. A second type of <clears throat> study, observational study, that we want to describe is what's called a cross-sectional study. This is one in which we have a population, which we have indicated here with N, and we in fact sample that population using some means and determine at a point in time typically uh, or over a brief period of time um, the number of people who have or don't have disease. C here is referring to people with disease when in red, C in black is those without disease, and then we're trying to we determine also concurrently whether or not they have a particular exposure or they don't have that exposure. Um, these are this is an approach that's frequently used in surveys where a larger population is sampled, people are interviewed either in person or by phone, for example, and uh, we determine whether they have particular health conditions, whether they um, have certain exposures at that point, um, for example, smoking, diet, do they take certain drugs, etc. Um, <clears throat> Some of the strengths of cross-sectional studies are that they are good for studying prevalent diseases with a long duration. Um, we can look at um, characteristics of the target population. We ask a number of questions about the population we're interested in. They're often useful in planning and evaluating health services, and they can be used to generate hypotheses about the study factors and disease that can be looked at using um, studies such as cohort and case control studies where we have a better chance to look at the influence of a uh, exposure over time, and we can be more assured that the exposure precedes the disease itself. They're not particularly good for rare diseases similar to cohort studies, they're not as good for diseases with short duration. And, uh, as we have mentioned, they are not good for determining the causal relationship of a study factor to disease in that we may not be able to determine for certain that the exposure to the factor preceded the development of the disease. The third type of study that we will mention here is the case control study. It is a um, study in which we start not with an exposure as we did in the cohort study, but we actually start with the disease. We identify persons who have disease that are designated as cases and people without disease that we designate as controls. And then through either interview or, re, uh, or review of records, we try to determine whether or not cases and controls had a particular exposure uh, in the past so that our inquiry is looking back in time uh, to try to make these determinations. Uh, strengths of case control studies is that they can be done relatively quickly. We don't have to wait for disease to develop over time. They also can be relatively inexpensive uh, for these same reasons. They're good for diseases with a short or long latency. They are good for diseases with a short or long duration. They are good for rare diseases in that we can actually go out and try to locate people with a particular disease that's not very common 
And we can also look at look backwards in time at multiple study factors or exposures for the disease. Uh, <clears throat> their weaknesses are that they are relatively inefficient for rare exposures. Um, we're usually unable to determine the prevalence or incidence of the disease in the population because of the nature of their uh, design. Uh, although there are certain uh, things that be can, can be done in terms of selection of both the cases and controls to try to um, better approximate uh, the incidence and prevalence in the popula population. It may be difficult also to obtain really adequate and accurate information about the exposure status uh, in that exposures may have occurred at some distant time in the past. Um, it may also be difficult to determine whether the exposure precedes the disease, uh, a similar problem as in uh, um, cross-sectional studies. And it is different from the classical experiment in that you um, really you're starting with people with disease as opposed to starting with a population without disease and then looking at their exposure to a factor and looking at its effect over time in terms of development of disease. Finally, um, the case control studies are somewhat more prone to bias, especially selection and recall bias. Uh, recall bias in the sense that people are trying to figure out, to, to remember, if you will, whether or not they were exposed or not exposed to a particular uh, factor in the past. Finally, uh, this slide taken from colleagues at the University of Wisconsin, uh, Javier Nieto and Pat Remington, which I think is a nice slide that shows us uh, the contrast between cohort and case control studies um, using our more typical two by two table approach. The uh, outcome um, is on the sort of the top. We have people who in a case, sorry, in a co cohort study, we start with a group divided into those who are exposed and unexposed. We follow them over time and determine whether or not they, in fact, developed an outcome. In other words, disease versus no disease. And we get the incidence of that disease within this group. And the same is true in the unexposed. We look at the incidence of disease uh, after, you know, after a period of time of exposure in that group. When we compare those two incidences, uh, we come up with the relative risk or a rate ratio. Uh, that gives us a sense of whether or not the exposure was important in terms of the outcome. In contrast, the case control study, <clears throat> we start with the outcome or disease status, people with disease, those without disease, and we try to determine whether or not people with and without disease were exposed or not exposed to a particular factor. And we have uh, the measure we use here is the odds of exposure in those who have disease and the odds of exposure in those without disease, then the ratio of these two odds gives us the odds ratio, which is used as a uh, way to compare the two groups. Um, and in some cases can be a reasonably good approximation of the uh, relative risk that we might have gotten had we been able to do a cohort study.